Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I'm back with another Food for the Soul Sunday. Okay, I'm really, really excited about this series. I feel like you guys have been enjoying it, and you'll have to let me know if this is something that you want me to continue outside of Vlogmas. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much I could say, but, uh, you know, we could try, you know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments below if you've been enjoying the Food for the Soul Sundays. And what I want to talk to you today is about healthy habits versus a religious checklist. So in my previous video, or I think was it two Sundays ago? Anyway, I basically talked to you about how reading my Bible was like drinking water. And today I want to talk to you about healthy habits as a believer versus a religious checklist. And um, this is something that I had to work through on my own in my own faith journey, which is just what I'm sharing with you. And I'm not saying that what I'm saying is law or uh, absolute truth. It's just things that have worked for me. And I hope that if they work for you and help enhance your faith walk, then I'm happy to share. But one of the things that I, I don't want to say I struggled with for a while, but one of the things that I kind of teeter back and forth between was what's the difference between having healthy habits as a believer and what's the difference between having a religious checklist? And for me, let me tell you what I mean. You know, people should say, you know, obviously you should read your Bible. You should pray. You should go to church. You should go to Bible study. You should volunteer. You should be in a life group. You should, you should, you should listen to gospel music. You should do this. You should do all of these different things, right? And I got to a place where I was like, am I doing these things because I desire to do them or am I doing these things because I feel like I have to do them or I should do them and I remember one of the pastors at my church did a really great sermon where he talked about that a lot of the things that we're encouraged to do as believers don't necessarily make us grow closer to God okay that there is no religious checklist of if you do this, you will automatically grow closer to God. You will automatically grow in your faith. You will automatically, you know, be a better person. There is there is no checklist. But what he did say is there are things that can set the environment and can encourage that growth and development. And then we leave it up to life and God and the Holy Spirit to do the rest. So, for example, you can read the Bible and read it more so as a story than as the living word. And so if you read it as a story, you can get information and not transformation. You can read the Bible as this is one of the best selling books of all time. Let me read it versus this is the inspired word of God. You could read the Bible as this is a, a, a historical book versus this is the manual that my master created for me to follow. And so I had to really decide when it came to reading my Bible, when it came to go going to church, when it came to volunteering, when it came to going to Bible study, being in the life group, having a devotional, mem memorizing scriptures, why was I doing what I was doing? And I didn't want to be legalistic. I didn't want to have a religious checklist where I feel like I'm just doing this so I can be a good Christian and so I can cross things off the list. And that sermon that that pastor preached, he talked about the difference between having to do something and getting to do something. And I think I had to get to the place where I was like, I get to read my Bible freely. I get to go to God directly and not have to go through a priest through prayer. I get to read the inspired word of God. I get to go to church and be around other believers and encourage my faith. I get to listen to music that builds up my faith and encourages me to be a better person and to live out what God has called me to. I get to do it, not I have to do it. And the same thing for me when it comes to tithe and offerings. I got to a place where I get to honor God with my substance. I get to thank him, not I have to. And I think that's the difference between the being under the dispensation of the law and being under the dispensation of grace that I got out of a religious checklist and got into a relationship. And I will tell you, that totally changed the game for me. And so one of the things that I decided to have versus a religious checklist is healthy habits, things that I felt really helped 
keep me grounded in my faith, kept a sturdy foundation. And so I decided to have healthy habits, just like I want to have a healthy habit of drinking water or eating healthy or exercising or getting adequate amounts of sleep. I know that those help the general well-being of my body. So I want to do the same thing with my soul and with my spirit is that these things do not guarantee me that I am going to grow closer to God, but they encourage that growth, if that makes sense. Being in community in a life group, being in community in a church, because some people go to church and well, well, there we go. Okay. And so really wanting to grow in relationship and not just check off a, a, a checkbox of things that I'm supposed to do. I really worked on myself and my beliefs to get to a place where I desire to do these things and I wanted to do them not because I had to do them you know what I'm saying so for you I would say think about some things where do you feel like you have to do certain things and what would it be like if you change your thought to I get to and what would how would that change your relationship with God how would that change the way you viewed your faith how would it change if you weren't looking at what's the most sinning I could do without actually sinning and versus I really don't want to sin because God loves me and Christ died for me. And if I did that, that would break his heart. And I just don't want to be that kind of believer. So ask yourself those questions. Are you doing things to be safe uh, so that, you know, you, you you'll be good because you don't want God to get you? Or are you doing things because you get to, right? And because you desire to. So cultivate healthy habits, not a religious checklist. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed doing this series on Food for the Soul Sundays. And um, if you have not registered for the Best Life Challenge, I encourage you to do so. Living your best life also includes creating healthy habits around your faith. And so if you got the Best Life Bundle, then I've got some ideas for you on how to cultivate um, your best life in the area of faith. And if you also have not registered for how to create a vision board that actually works, all the details uh, to register for the workshop are going to be in the description box below. And I hope to see you in my next video. Peace.